I've compiled the most recent lore from a slew of novels to ensure this video is up to date and accurate as possible, so I hope you enjoy and maybe even learn something new. We originally had 9 corrupted legions to make our way through, but as I wrote this script it became apparent that would be a very long video that the majority of you guys don't seem to watch as often. So we've split this into the first 3 legions, and if it receives enough views, likes and even subs, then I'll make sure we do all the rest. So make sure you show your support and hit those like, share, sub and notification buttons. The galaxy is becoming overrun and infested by numberless hordes of the Dark God's servants. Chief among these mortals are the Emperor's creations who turned their back on humanity, the traitor Astartes. The nature of chaos means it is not one unified entity or faction, but rather a seething, roiling sea of emotions, at once smashing against the shoreline of the material realm before rolling back, churning within itself. There is no prolonged common cause among the servants of the Pantheon, meaning that chaos-aligned factions are in themselves perpetually warring among one another in a state of disorder. And whilst this fact alone has surely saved the known galaxy from an even darker, more oppressive existence during the long millennia since the heresy, it also means that defining exactly what goal each traitor Astartes legion strives towards is a perplexing subject at times. The Emperor's Children Throughout the material galaxy and even mirrored within the depthless places of the warp, heretical whispers spread from warband to warband, cult to cult telling of the Phoenix Rebirth. It is said that the Phoenician, Fulgrim, Primarch of the Third Legion, will lead his sons once more in a debaucherous, murderous campaign throughout the Imperium's realm, destined as he to bring the God Emperor's domain to its knees. At the head of this aspiring horde is perhaps Fulgrim's most faithful general, for not only does he occupy the rank of Lord Commander, leading the Phoenix Conclave itself, but he was even beheaded by his father, only to be sewn together again, yet remains a dutiful son. We of course speak of Eidolon. The Phoenix Conclave happens to be the greatest united gathering of Emperor's children, senior legionaries since the Legion Wars. Even the vaunted, boastful swordsman Lucius occupies a position within their ranks. As in the nature of those organisations touched by chaos, there exists a great many warbands and even armies whose origin is tracked back to the Emperor's Children Legion. Considering the Phoenix Conclave seems to be the most influential, however, means we will discuss them. Of course, there is not a great deal known about this shadowy, reticent brotherhood, as the only information regarding their existence or motives has been relayed through the first-hand accounts of Fabius Bile himself, and he does not think fondly of his brothers. What we are aware of, however, is that the likes of Eidolon, Lucius and even Julius Kaiseron are all members and that their base of operations is founded, or perhaps never was moved, from the ruins of Canticle City within the Eye of Terror. For those unaware, Canticle City was a great if not debased civilization founded by the Emperor's children upon the demon world of Harmony within the Eye of Terror during the era known as the Legion Wars. This age took place immediately following the various traitor legions retreat into the eye, where legion fought legion over resources as well as tainted honour, blaming one another for the failure which was the Siege of Terror. Populated by not only third legion warriors but also worker menials and pleasure slaves, Harmony's orbit consisted of a formidable network of defence turrets as well as flak cannons. It was not until Abaddon the Despoiler at the head of his newly founded Black Legion hurled a void ship directly into Canticle City that the Emperor's children's persecution of the Sons of Horus during the Legion Wars was finally put to an end. Canticle City was reduced to rubble, and so it seems that the Phoenix Conclave have either refounded a home among the ruins of that wretched place, or otherwise never left following its destruction. As for the aim of these deviant traitors, they seek to repair a fractured Third Legion, uniting their brothers once more, a dark reflection of their past glory during the Crusade era. Fabius himself believes this is a foolhardy task, for the Astartes of the Third Legion, now wholly dedicated to the Prince of Pleasure, seek to fulfil their own personal, foul cravings, lacking the martial discipline to act as a coherent, legion-sized force once again. But perhaps he is mistaken. 
for it is the third legion out of all the traitor legions who take the most pride of their past actions as a unified Astartes legion. The days of old, glorious, true martial aspirations, these times call to the hearts of the brothers of the third. But there is a second, far more curious narrative involving the Emperor's children in recent times, and I know many of you have heard of it. For those who haven't, Fabius Bile, when dwelling within Canticle City millennia prior, had managed to clone a perfect child version of his gene father Fulcrum. He had believed it destroyed when Abaddon's revenge levelled that place. However, he discovered it was still alive within the 41st millennium. Interestingly, the child remained completely uncorrupted within stasis, even being worshipped by foul mutants, for it was such a perfect clone of Fulgrim that it even contained the spark of essence which truly marks the Emperor's sons. That glowing righteousness which ensures all loyal bend the knee without a moment's pause. Fearing his new men, as well as his legion brothers, would throw themselves upon Fulgrim's aspirations once more, Fabius traded the child to Trazen the Infinite, so it could be put into stasis and stored within his museum. What is truly intriguing about this recent narrative is that, knowing this clone was not even the original Primarch, the Third Legion were willing to pledge their loyalty to an unblemished, pure version of their father, with some even regretting how far they had fallen from grace under the effect of Slaanesh's influence. So here we have two recent narratives wherein the true Phoenician stirs, but also his more noble clone self, potentially locked in stasis, Trazin's prisoner for all time. But maybe not. Time will tell. Either way, rumours abound online of a new Emperor's Children model line releasing in the near future, bringing with it, I hope, a host of new lore for us to speak about. The Iron Warriors with the likes of Captains Forex and even the infamous Kroger slain during the second siege of Hydra Cordatus, there remains few Iron Warriors characters of note to forge an evolving narrative on behalf of the 4th Legion. It just so happens though that within the same grand company as these deceased captains, there dwelt an ambitious half-breed by the name of Hon Su, who held the same rank. As the climactic end to the very same campaign which saw Kroger murdered and Forex slain in battle, the three captains commanding Warsmith, Barb and Falk, would ascend to demonhood, naming Captain Honsu as his most worthy successor. And so did the much despised half-breed traitor Astartes, named as Honsu, inherit his own grand company. This is either a true display of martial respect on behalf of Barb and Falk, or a lack of options. For the Warsmith did not have to reward a half-breed like Honsu, but the young Astarte's skill and temerity could not be denied. Neither could the fact that little capable candidates remained within the Grand Company to take on the mantle of Warsmith. For those not aware, Honsu is referred to as a half-breed due to the fact his inherited progenoids were the result of an unholy fusion between the Lord of Iron himself, Pertil Rabo, but also his most despised adversary and brother, Rogel Dawn. So as you can see, for one bearing the gene seed of their most hated foe to rise in esteem within the Iron Warrior's ranks, one must possess skill and temerity in vast quantities. Now you're likely familiar with one of Honsu's most recent projects, the Demonculaba. And what would a devious senior Chaos Space Marine be without a mortal adversary within the Imperium? And for Honsu, this opponent would take the form of none other than disgraced Ultramarine's captain, Uriel Ventress. We're not going to break down the feud between these two right now, as it will sideline the intended narrative of this video. However, in summary we could say, the two are basically even in the way they've exacted a toll on one another, with Honsu likely edging out an advantage, considering his reprisal costs the lives of billions of citizens within the realm of Ultramar. Now, what's convenient about Honsu's tale is that he ascended to command of his own great company during Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade. This was prior to the events of the Demonculaba and Honsu's invasion of Ultramar, so Warsmith Honsu is a very relevant character within the current timeline of 40k. The last we hear of this murderous, vengeful marine, he has decided to plot a course from Ultramar back to Medrangard to attain an audience with Pertil Rabo himself. 
I don't know about you, but I'm really hanging to hear a description of the Iron Lord's inner court and what exactly the most bitter of Primarchs has become since the Siege of Terra. If you'd like to hear the newest musings of Perturabo possibly considering demonhood before Horus and the Emperor clash, the link for that video is in the description now. Night Lords They epitomise the chaotic, cruel and certainly disloyal characteristics one so often associates with traitor marines. Kurz's sons are almost the most fractured of legions, though that title must surely fall upon the 12th, Angron's World Eaters. Now the Night Lords would likely be the least relevant legion to influence events within the 40k setting, but for one exceptional, fated being, Talos Valkoran. I know what you're thinking. Talos was slain, which is true. However, there's a couple of points sometimes overlooked when it comes to the Night Lord Legion as a whole. Often viewed by many as little more than craven, almost cowardly creatures, they nevertheless maintained an inherited, at times torturous ability from their Primarch. You see, the same visions which racked Conrad Kurz, likely driving him to the brink of insanity he so clearly teetered upon during the Crusade and Heresy, were also passed on to some of his sons. For many who inherited these prophetic insights, they were painful and mystifying, most amounting to naught other than forcing the Night Lord experience in them to lock themselves within their quarters, suffering in isolation until they passed. Talos Valkoran also inherited this curse. However, with his death, his gene seed would live on, implanted into a child whose parents were but a mortal man, and intriguingly, a female navigator. This child is called Decimus. Whether the product of his parents' own lineage or some other more fated reasons, the Night Lord born from this unholy union of corrupted gene seed with potentially mutant child resulted in an Astartes who could more clearly harness his prophetic abilities. Because fortunately, or rather unluckily for the Imperium, Talos's prophetic curse was passed on through his gene seed. Within the last novel of Dan Abnett's Night Lord's trilogy, that is the book titled Voidstalker, we see this child fully matured as commander of Talos' old warband, and he is in the process of angering a gathering of Night Lord's senior commanders. Debating the best course of action for their various resources taking part in Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade, Decimus instead informs each one of the gathered lords how they will die, whilst they strive towards the aspirations of Abaddon, one who is not even of their blood. Instead of fighting on behalf of others, Decimus wishes to reunite the Legion of Old, to rally a galaxy's worth of disparate warbands, all pursuing their own ends. He is keenly aware that his gene brothers are egotistical creatures who wish to live long lives filled with inflicting terror and pain. Dying would bring about an abrupt end to that existence. By wielding this knowledge over his kin, Decimus has the greatest chance of all the Night Lords in the current era to reunite the Eighth once more. Well, he has the greatest chance unless Jago Sevatarian is found to be alive. Now that would make for a great read. The final point regarding Talos, as well as Decimus, which truly deserves to be mentioned, is that whilst Talos was still living, he was not only approached by Abaddon the Despoiler in an effort to force the Night Lord to join the Black Legion, but he was also, whilst under the effects of Abaddon's Sorcerer, approached by all four Chaos Gods, each attempting to attain Talos' allegiance. Talos of course rebuffs them all, however, given Abaddon's reliability on sorcerers to aid in the planning of his overall strategies, this failed attempt to force Talos' obeisance may very well pass on to his successor, Decimus. It may just be that the being who holds Talos' gene seed is destined for great things. Again, time will tell. If you have stuck around this long, let me know your favourite Chaos Legion in the comments and why. Now remember I'd like to make a follow up to this detailing the other legions, which would be a longer video describing the other six traitor legions. But before I do, I need to know this video was well received. So reacting in ways such as liking, sharing, commenting and subbing, tells the YouTube algorithm to share the video with a wider audience. This gains more views so it lets me know people enjoyed the content through the video's analytics. Likewise, you can hop on over to our community Discord and chat hobby and lore with us. 
It's starting to build in numbers and honestly has some great people in it. Supporting us on Patreon nets you free stuff and it helps us to create more content with better gear and editing programs. There's even three tiers of support available beginning from as low as $2 with the highest tier including high res artwork for a fraction of the price you would pay anywhere else. If you'd like to show your support just follow the link in the description to see what's available. If you're looking to purchase Warhammer models, then doing so through our link to Gap Games is another excellent way to support us. And of course, if you are enjoying our content, please consider hitting the like, notification and sub buttons. This is a really excellent free way to support the channel and tells YouTube's algorithm to share our videos with more people. Thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate your support. Until next time, take it easy and have a good one.